Anthony Randolph was a five-star recruit, a lottery pick in the NBA draft, and a very talented player in general. So how is it that he bounced from team to team in the NBA, never found a consistent starting role, and eventually was forced to go overseas? Well, the answer lies within a very interesting story that may just surprise you. Welcome back to the channel for all things pro sports. Stay locked in right here to get all of the details. Anthony Randolph lived across a variety of places over his early life with his U.S. military parent, starting off in West Germany and eventually moving back to the United States. In the U.S., he moved from Pasadena, California to North Little Rock, Arkansas to Dallas, Texas. At Woodrow Wilson High School in Dallas, he blossomed from an unknown player to a five-star recruit. There, he grew a lot of the characteristics that would make him an effective player at higher levels of basketball. For instance, his coach, Pat Washington, helped Randolph to become a more effective defensive player as he continually hustled as a result of Washington's training method. This method, called lab, required players to keep running continually and then to get back on defense following turnovers. This method and general development helped Randolph to become a star on the Woodrow Wilson squad as he put up 25.8 points and 12.6 rebounds per game as a senior in the program. Although the team itself was unsuccessful and didn't even reach the playoffs, Randolph earned individual accolades, including being named to the All-Area Boys basketball team and playing in several national showcases for top prep players. As he got ready to head to college, Randolph was ranked as the number 12 player in the 2007 recruiting class and the number 4 player at the small forward position. Randolph had quite a bit of a collegiate recruiting interest, including from blue chip programs like Georgetown and Kansas, as well as other programs like Baylor, Memphis, Texas, and Louisiana State University. Ultimately, he decided to attend LSU given that he had the best chance of finding immediate playing time at his position within that program. He was able to play a substantial amount and found success in the minutes in which he played. Overall, Randolph averaged 15.6 points, 8.5 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and 2.3 blocks per game, which was good enough to earn him accolades like honorable mention All-SEC, on top of being named as part of the first-team All-Freshman. Even with his strong on-court play, LSU still had a difficult season, finishing with a losing record and not being able to make the NCAA tournament. Coming off his strong season, Randolph decided to declare for the NBA draft, and while he was considered to be a strong prospect with quality skills, he had the misfortune of entering a draft class perceived to be very strong. The 2008 NBA draft would feature highly recruited players like future NBA MVPs Derrick Rose and Russell Westbrook, as well as all the other all-star players like Kevin Love and Brooke Lopez. Even amongst this mix, Randolph's scouting report looked promising. A scouting report by Rob Elliott of HoopsAddict.com describes Randolph as having the shot-blocking ability of Tayshawn Prince, the ball-handling skills of Lamar Odom, and the quickness and athleticism of Sean Marion. The scouting report and others described him as having the potential to dominate as a mix of a small forward and power forward with his 6'11 height, as well as his strong shooting and rebounding abilities. However, teams were still a bit concerned with his slight frame. He weighed only around 220 pounds going into the draft, even with his great height, as well as the fact that his game was still quite raw and dependent upon his size. Still, Elliott finished his scouting report with some promising words. As long as he lands with a team with patience who can bring him along slowly, and the fans don't mind enduring a few growing pains, Randolph could very well turn into the biggest steal of the 2008 draft. Talents like this don't come around very often, and when they do, you can be sure there will be a long list of teams lining up to take a chance on this fabulous freshman. The Golden State Warriors drafted Anthony Randolph with the 14th overall pick in the 2008 NBA Draft. While immediate expectations were relatively low, it was the general consensus that Randolph would receive substantial playing time while beginning to grow into his role. In fact, the idea was that he had a very high ceiling relative to his draft value. However, things didn't start off the way that Randolph or his fans would have wanted. Right from the start, Randolph didn't mesh well with Warriors coach Don Nelson. At one point, after Randolph had already not played in several consecutive games, Nelson said publicly that Randolph needed to grow up and that he would be put on ice until the rest of the Warriors thought he would be ready to play. The assumption was that Randolph had not been playing as much as he would have liked as a rookie. Remember, he did go to LSU in particular because of playing time and that the coaches wanted him to learn more before he played. 
Randolph's own comment showed the same thought process as he said, I can't do anything about what somebody thinks. I can't control somebody's thoughts. I just go out there and do what I'm doing. If I get my minutes, I play hard like I do every game. Now, despite his early season seed in the doghouse, Randolph ended up playing quite a bit down the stretch. Although he averaged just 7.9 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 1.2 blocks per game over the whole 2008-2009 season, he was much better in the last 12 games of the season. In those games, he averaged 13.5 points, 10.5 rebounds, and 1.6 blocks. His play style in the NBA was developing to be as an inside forward who could score in a variety of ways, as well as effectively rebound and be a competitive defender. Now, despite the bright signs from Randolph, his team again struggled. The Warriors only ended up with 29 wins and a high draft pick. It wasn't all bad, though. They used that pick on a guard named Stephen Curry. Now, by all accounts, Randolph hit the gym more than he ever had in the 2009 offseason. By the time that he returned for the Summer League, he looked like he was ready to take a huge step. Several sports writers covering the tournament thought that Randolph should have been the overall MVP of the Summer League as he was consistently excellent in addition to putting up a crazy 42-point game against the Bulls. However, Clippers draft pick Blake Griffin was the ultimate MVP of the tournament. Now, it is hard to say what happened next. On the outside, it seems like Randolph's value was at an all-time high, having shown the sky-high potential that had gotten him a spot in the lottery. But on the inside, things didn't go as planned. He played in less games than he had in his rookie season and saw his role on the team reduced. His stats did go up. He averaged 11.6 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 1.5 blocks per game. But it began to appear that something was wrong with Randolph's fit on the team. In fact, in looking back at his career up to that point, none of Randolph's teams had ever been able to win at a significant level. During his high school days in Dallas, his team didn't even make the state tournament, and at LSU, the team didn't make the NCAA tournament. Now, both years in Golden State had ended without a playoff berth. The stats were good, and they showed a quality interior player. But as part of a team, things started to look a little bit off. Whether for this reason or just for the fact that they wanted to use Randolph as an asset, the Warriors traded their young big man, along with several other players, to the New York Knicks and a sign-and-trade deal for all-star power forward David Lee, who essentially replaced Randolph in terms of positional fit. From there, Randolph's career took a bit of a tumble through relative obscurity. Still unable to reach his potential, Randolph would start only 13 games through the rest of his NBA career, playing a scant number of minutes and never putting up numbers better than he did in his second season with the Warriors. Playing with the Knicks, the Timberwolves, and the Nuggets, he never found a consistent role. One of the biggest disappointments was the fact that Randolph never developed his shooting ability to an NBA caliber, and this limited him to more of a situational post-player role with defensive upside in the NBA. Randolph moved over to Europe in 2015, playing for both Lokomotiv and Real Madrid. There against what was a relatively lower level of competition, Randolph put up better numbers that were on par with what was hoped of him in the NBA. This included a solid season with Lokomotiv in 2015-2016, where he put up 14.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 1.2 assists per game. Even more notable was the increased efficiency as a 3-point shooter that he was able to achieve as part of Real Madrid. Randolph also played with the Slovenian national team, despite not having any connection to the country, during the 2017 Eurobasket tournament, where he ended up winning the title along with now NBA stars Luka Doncic and Goran Dragic. So what really happened to Anthony Randolph? The answer is really up to you, given the lack of the hard facts that we have to go on. It could be as simple as a lack of development, especially when considering that his outside shot didn't develop until he was playing overseas years after his NBA career had passed him by. Or it could be a matter of his work ethic, first criticized by Don Nelson and several other Warriors players during his rookie year. Or it could be the ever-elusive fit question. Was Randolph just not a great team basketball player considering that nearly every team that he played a substantial part in lost up until he went to Europe and his outside shot kicked in? There's really no way to know for sure, but it is fair to say that Anthony Randolph didn't live up to his expected potential as an NBA player. So what do you think about Anthony Randolph? What caused his career to go off the tracks? Please leave us a comment and make sure that you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you can watch our latest NBA content as soon as it drops. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.